Player's choice right now. Wow, we're going back. Shout out to Lakerland. Shout out to the Cowboys show that's coming up after this. Shout out to Fluence Top 10. What up, Player's Choice? Uh, I am happy because my co-host is finally <laughs> back doing his job. His yes, other sir. job. Um, obviously, you know, <laughs> as most of y'all know, Juwan has been in camp right now with the Colts. Uh, they just broke camp, just broke preseason. So he's obviously, you know, the summer is definitely a busy time for him. I think any football player knows the summer is really from the moment June hits to that August time. It's really all work. Most football Facts. players, most football players don't really get their summers off because of, you know, you right the the turn right into the season is right after summer ends. So you always have to be in shape. Uh, with that being said, Juwan, how you been, man? I've been great, man. Can't complain. Adjusting to this indie life. Adjusting to this indie life. Um, new team, mm-hmm. uh, young team. Uh, I'm enjoying it though. Yeah. It's, it's been great for me so far. So actually, the fact that you mentioned young team, I think you actually—I don't know if you know this, but you're actually on the youngest team in the NFL. Yeah. I don't think I think you're the only team that doesn't have one player over the age of 30 right now. It is like a complete. They are y'all are literally known to be the complete youth movement of the NFL. And knowing that, my question to you is. What is that like being in a lot? Because, you know, most people would say y'all locker room is too young. It's obviously clear that you guys are building something, you know, for the future um, and obviously are looking ahead. That's why you're starting so young. Do, do, can you tell me a bit about what that dynamic is like? And do you have you have you ever no, have you noticed it? I mean, I noticed it, but never in a, in a negative way. You know, right. um, I've been wanting to be on a young team. You know, I mean, uh-huh. the Green Bay Packers were young, but I definitely wanted to be on a, a team where that was building and could use, you know, real pieces. And I'm glad that, you know, I'm a part of this team because even though they're young, we got some playmakers and you can see the potential uh-huh. that of why they've been picked here and why they, they're groomed here and shit and stuff. But I think that uh, we got a special team that we're going to shock some people. You know, I've been on a part of I've been a part of a lot of up and coming teams and uh-huh. I feel like we're going to shock some people this year. So. You know, the energy has always been great so far. So, yeah, so we'll see, I'm, I'm glad I love a lot of energy because ultimately, obviously, I'm biased towards you. So I'm I'm big on I want to see I be successful. Obviously, Anthony Richardson has really took. I'll be honest, he's he's probably been the most talked about rookie, I think, okay. of, of all of them. And, it, and it's and, and, and the stories have been the, the, the thing is, most times when you hear about a young player so many times this early in their career have so many different anecdotes about them. Usually it's like, you know, speeding tickets, uh, stuff you see on like <laughs> Instagram, you know, stuff like that. Just, just young, you know, just young stuff. But him, it's been like last one in, first one in, last one out. It's been having to be taking literally, you know, your team staff having to take him to the locker room because he's making sure <laughs> every fan is being attended to. Can you talk to me about, you know, his maturity at a young age and him also being named a captain? How has he won y'all over this camp? Um, I think it's just because of the, the tools that he has and the way he carries himself. You know, he carries himself real mature. He's humble, you know, low-key laid back, but, you know, he's about his work. He's about his work, and you can tell he has, you know, he's been raised well. He's been raised well. He has good people around him in his circle. You know, has everything organized and managed specifically for him. So you can tell he's going to be successful just in that um, just in that aspect, you know, he got the right people around him and, you know, he's doing the right things. Um, and then just what he does on the field is like some of that stuff you can't teach. So right. when you see that, it just excites you and right. you just got to be, you know, you just got to understand what the league is about and you got to know that it takes time. And I right. think that if everybody has that mindset and, you know, we build them up, continue to build them up, stay, you know, hold, hold him down, you know, have his back. I think that, you know, he's going to be a crazy success story. But, I mean, mm-hmm. he's just a uh, uh, – I, def- I think what really speaks out about him is, you know, just the way he carries himself, you know. Right. Uh, he went out to eat with us one one time uh, when we played Buffalo, you mm-hmm. know, day before. And we just sit – it's like six of us, you know, receivers, quarterback. And, you know, he just has good, en- good humble energy. And, you know, we talk about, you know, the nerves for tomorrow, the game. Mm-hmm. And you could just tell he's confident. And, you know, right. when he's out there, he just looks the part. So, I'm right. excited. So obviously there is, and, and I say this with with you, you. You said that you're going, y'all are going to shock some people, yeah. and I think a lot of people underrate y'all in a lot of ways because of 
the fact that you have a young quarterback and you ultimately have a, a young team. But take me into your wide receiver room because I think that's probably, to me, on paper, the most underrated part of your team that people don't know about. Lucky. Because, because one, I don't know how many people paid attention to to you this year in in how you've adjusted to this new team. Obviously, I think people have already had expectations of like Michael Pittman and Alex Pierce, but you, Josh Downs, McKenzie, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, a you got a lot of receivers that not only are like y'all versatile, y'all do a bunch of different things really well. I think y'all yeah. could, it's like, um, it's like having different, different ways to attack you. You know what I'm saying? Because of the different type of receivers that y'all are. And just t- take a take us bit uh, uh take us inside your wide receiver room. How do you guys learn off each other? And also, you kind of being a vet now. You're five. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you're like one of the older guys in this wide receiver room. So just take me through that dynamic. You know, it's crazy that you say that. Like it really sounds funny. Like <laughs> too, I know I'm one of the <laughs> oldest in the room. It's crazy. I really am. I'm like year seven is the oldest, which is um Isaiah McKenzie, mm-hmm. and then it's me. That's active this year. It's just me. I think. That's it. I'm no, I'm the second oldest, second oldest okay. room. So I mean, I think it's special being a part of this room. That's you know, it's young. You know, mm-hmm. we got year year four, year five, year two, year three. You know, we go all the way up. And I think that everybody you know learns off each other. You know, since we since we've been here, we've all been picking parts of our game. Like it's crazy. Like they be calling me Cylon Hustle, um, because of some of our leases, some of the routes yeah. that we put together. And they asking me like, what do you do before practice? Like. I need to come fuck. I need to come fuck with you. Do some of those right. drills that you're doing before practice that they see me working. So mm-hmm. everybody's humble enough to you know want to learn from each other and you know give games to each other. Yeah. So I think that uh, we're gonna be a surprising room. You gotta you gotta deal with our our growing pains. We're young, um, mm-hmm. growing pains as an offense. You know, new offense. But I think that we got the tools to shock some people and mm-hmm. we can attack you in all in all different areas. So I right. think once they learn how to use everybody to to the fullest and you know you guys we're gonna see you know the season how it all mm-hmm. really forms together but i think we're gonna be nice in year five for you specifically obviously there's been clips of you posted by coast media of just you know you making plays in camp obviously you scored a touchdown honestly i shit i mean hell of hell of concentration back of the end zone through the db's hands i mean it, it doesn't get any better than that you know what i'm saying just to show like your ability, you know, be able to toe tap, stay concentrated with somebody going flying right past you out of balls in the air. Tell me about what you've done in year five now. Like you, do you feel like you finally putting it together now where people can really see it because yeah. you've kind of, I've always considered you a hidden gem. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I drafted you on my fantasy team this year just because, you know, nobody, I know everybody doesn't know what you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I know what you, what you are. You know what Facts. I'm saying? So with that being said, what what have you done in year five to feel like, you know, you ready to people wake, wake, wake the world up for real? I think it was uh, it started from my routine this offseason. You know, I told myself um, I've spent a couple eat off season so far in the NFL by myself, you know, doing a lot of work by myself, not with like a receiver trainer or, you know, working out by myself. And I told myself. You know, it's got me so it's got me this far, you know, in week year four. But I mean, yeah. I still haven't cracked the way I needed to go. And right. I I said that this year I'm gonna be consistent with my routine, consistent with you know how I'm living. And yeah. mentally I also took a jump because I just way more confident. You know, I've been in the league for four years now. I know what works, I know what doesn't work, I know what teams are looking for, and mm-hmm. I know how much more I could work from what I've done these past four years. So I, I took right. that all into account this year and you know, I really bet on myself because I knew right. um, I was just ready for a fresh start. And mm-hmm. I got that fresh start and I knew there's no looking back. Like for the workout, it was funny. You know, we it was a, like maybe four receivers that came to work out. Nikhil, right. me, a couple other Nikhil, guys. Nikhil Harry. Yeah, Nikhil Harry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I came with two suitcases, bag <laughs> full. Like I'm not going home. <laughs> I wasn't going home. So Yo. I, I came there knowing like, this is one of my last, it's not going to be my last op, but I mean, I went in there knowing like this could be my last op and you know, this year I want to do things right and uh, really get what I deserve. So I think I just went in there with this attitude this year and uh, I'm ready. 
Yo, bro, if that wasn't by any means right there, so if anybody understands what he's telling y'all, if y'all young, you know, you hungry for something, Juwan just gave y'all really a gem about betting on yourself. That is some, that is some, that is literally the definition of by any means. Do you hear what he said? Uh He came to his workout (laughs) with his bag for two suitcases, not ready to get on a plane and go back home. You know, that's really betting on yourself. That, that, idea that i'm gonna i'm gonna take this fresh start because i want to better myself did you have any fear in that or was that just like you know i you know we've obviously talked about it a bit you know what your future looked like and what you wanted to do Mm -hmm. uh going into this year but to make that decision to go to the Colts, bet on yourself they're going to see me and know that they're not going to let me get out of the building what was um you know was there any i don't want to say fear but was there any like nervousness or anxiety going into that Especially knowing that you're 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 bringing you bringing your Louis with you, so to say. Um, I wasn't really fair. I wasn't really doubtful or didn't have much fear because I was so hungry. I it was it's May. I'm still not on the team. I've been a free agent since February second or February mm-hmm. whenever that was, February tenth. I've been a free agent since then, so I'm hungry. I'm I'm waiting for any opportunity because I know that teams aren't able to really see what I could do based off some of the little clips that in right. the past couple of years. Like I'm ready to be in front of some new people so they can really see what I'm about cuz I've been getting hit. So, you know, I was that's that's an ad to I went in there. I like it was no no fair for me. I knew mm-hmm. I knew I had my agent on my back. I had a shout out Kenny Moore. He was a big person that helped get me here to the coast. So, I knew he had my back. Shout out to Kenny Moore. Shout out to my guy. You know, that's how I came. You know, I'm hungry right now. What t- I, what, I what talk about your relationship with Kenny? It's crazy because I just met Kenny this off season. Um, mm-hmm. We got the same trainer down in Florida. Shout okay, my, okay. Shout out to my boy. Um, yeah, we got the same trainer, and we trained at the same gym. And I uh, met him this off season, and he just seen how I work. You know, he's a humble guy. You, you know, you wouldn't. Some people wouldn't even know that's Kenny Moore just because how how humble he is, you right? Know, how cool he is. Um, and he just seen the way I work, the way I attacked, and he's like, "Yo, where you at? Like, what team you at? You know, if I can help you in any way, you know, let me know." I told him what's up, and you know he he helped he helped get me there. You know he made yeah. some calls. They wanted to see what I look like in person, and on say scene they were sold. And uh, bro, you was all. And the thing is, people don't know like you, Juwan. You are like a workhorse in terms of like keeping staying in shape throughout the year. Like you don't. Right. Do you remember? Do you remember when we were in, uh, we were in like college? I think you like senior. Year, I remember I told you like, bro, take a break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, bro, you work out too much. Now I look back on it. I mean, that's just always who you've been. You know what I'm saying? But I think the biggest difference that I've just noticed from just even having the we've been on for 12 minutes here in this conversation, bro. You sound the most confident I've ever heard you, bro. Like even in, even the way like you present on the show right now, bro. Like you, I, I could tell. Like I don't know. Like I like it's like you. I don't want to say you're on the other side of the mountain, but it's like <laughs> you believe. Like it's like a different belief in yourself. So. That's sure. good to hear, bro. That's good to hear. And I'm, and I'm, I'm so excited for the season. Do you think? Do you got Anthony Richardson as your favorite right now for, uh, for rookie of the year, Ooh. offensive rookie of the year? Is he your favorite right now? Just obviously, I know he's your teammate, so you're yeah. biased, but everything he's capable of. I mean, there's, there's no reason why he couldn't be that. Yeah, I mean, I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, so I would love to see him win that. I would love to see him win that. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he'll. We're gonna go as far as he goes. You know, as a team. I right. mean, it's not a, a, a one-team aspect. You know, defense has to pull their weight, special teams, of course. But, I mean, you know, your team goes as far as your quarterback goes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think we're going to be able to put them in some great positions. And, right. you know, if we connect, if we connect the way we should, he's going to have a great yeah. chance at that that trophy right. and putting us in a great position to win as a team. So let me ask you a question about the coaching staff element in the NFL because you've been on three different coaching staffs uh, in, this, in your career so far. And – uh, is there a certain way that each one is conducted? Like, do you feel like, you know, in the in the way of like professionalism? Like, obviously, once y'all have practice, you have your own, you have your own life. You know what I'm saying? Some people have families, they have children, and so I think one of the biggest things in professional sports for like young players is just figuring out what do you, what do you, figuring out what to do with your time. Yeah. Um, what do you think the diff? What were like some of the subtle differences between coaching staffs and then? Tell me a bit about this new one you have, obviously, and like what they've brought to Indianapolis. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of differences between the winning organizations and the losing organizations. You can see that the the organizations carry themselves different, and they treat 
not saying that they treat people badly, but they treat mm-hmm. players different in terms of you know the winner, winning organizations. They they treat players with um as real adults, you know, real mm-hmm. mature about things. They they want to incorporate fun into being at the facility, fun yeah. into as a team. Like these winning teams, we go. We do fun stuff together. We go bowling. We got basketball right. hoops in the building. You know, mm-hmm. we go paintballing. Dinners at dinners at coach's house. You know, little stuff like that. I've been a part of with Green Bay and with the Colts so far. You know that we weren't necessarily doing in Denver, and right. you know, just the team camaraderie is different in these two places. You know, yeah, people want to be around each other. Um, and we're also in in areas where it's like these are two not the biggest cities, so it's mm-hmm. like. I feel like that also creates an aspect where that like make brings people more together, you know, mm-hmm, smaller mm-hmm. cities, not as much stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you, do you like being in, cause I mean, all three of your teams, I mean, Denver is probably the biggest city of the three yeah, places you've been. Sure. Do you, do you feel like, uh, like, do you like the small city environment? Like what? Cause it's, it's, it's really been a part of your career. Like having yeah, that, even, no, no even, in, even in college, you know, you're in mm-hmm. Boulder, Colorado, like you're in, small pockets of these of these states yeah what is, has that kind of rubbed off on you in a sense definitely definitely um i like it being having a little mix though like indy i mm-hmm. think indy is a great mix because right green bay there's literally nothing out there. <laughs> there's really nothing at the end of the day if you really focus and super locked in it can help you but then again some people need an escape and some people just need to be around more and it, it could benefit right. them as well as you know yeah. their career and how they play based off their off the field life and yeah. i think that being an indie is a great mix. You got the low key vibes. Yeah. You got the downtown city vibe. Right. And it's still low key enough where you're not gonna. Nobody really knows everybody. You outside, yeah. you know, they not might not recognize you. So, I think that uh, it's kind of definitely been me. And you yeah, know, that's who I am. I'm a low key person as well. Right. So I think it fits me for sure. Nah, for sure. And you know, just to clarify too, like. You know, some people just and you know, being able to go outside, you know, doesn't necessarily mean like partying. It's just like yeah. to be able to go out to a restaurant, you know what I'm saying, and do stuff like that, to be able to just actually be able to just be in your city and do things. So, you know, that's important. Like some like you said, some people for some people, NFL really is just a job to them at this point. Like it's not some people in NFL really love it, love playing football, but some people it's like this is a job. Like, you know, I listen to Jamal Williams say football to me is a job you know he said it to you know the saints press like that's why like after this he's like i want to kick it i want to watch anime i want to do this and this is what i do when i come here this is i'm an employee so it is important for people i think it's important for most human beings to have balance in their life i just think because we're you're an athlete and you're at the professional level and how it's such a big business you're always under a microscope people forget that like sports is not all somebody is or all they are outside of when they're actually doing it. So 100%. that's a great point. So let's get into something fun, man. It has all been right. a long time coming, brother. I've been on this platform for months before you got here talking about Deion Sanders and Ooh. what, you know, first. Hey, why well, made a backdrop? Oh, you want to get, oh, you want to see the Reverend again? You want to see the, let me give you back yeah, the Reverend. Bro, that was funny. Yeah, as hell. This is the Reverend. So right here, <laughs> this is who I call the Reverend. Cause I've been telling so, how he, how he became the reverend was when, when he got to JSU, I said he was doing the Lord's work just because I thought about the fact that the attention that he was bringing to Colorado was so magnificent that, I mean, to Jackson State, that is going to have great, you know, lasting impact on HBCUs. And as you can see, if you've seen, Florida A&M has gotten investments from, uh, from uh, Nike, Howard is sponsored. It's Jordan brand now. So it's like the attention to HBCU has has really grown. Even here in Seattle, they had an HBCU um, showcase during the MLB All-Star game for the top uh, HBCU prospects in baseball. So you can see the the effect of Dion is literally still resonating because there's been such a trickle effect. And then when he went to Colorado, I told people, you know, the over under on your team going into this year, your alma mater was three and a half. People had y'all winning three, four. The over under was could y'all win four games? <laughs> I don't want to get right into the game. I want to get into like the the build because I think that's been the thing that I've been so invested in. I know that Prime has been a winner everywhere he's went. He's yeah. been a winner at high school. He's been a winner at the collegiate level. 
He's been a winner at football. He's been a winner in baseball. Like, he is a winner. And I don't think that's by accident. And so because of that, I always felt like him going to Colorado was going to make him phenomenal. He was going to be phenomenal there. Who wants – who – I mean, bro, if you and I were getting recruited when we were in high school by Deion Sanders, he could have been at – bro, he could have been at mm. at Appalachian State. Facts. You know what I'm saying? He could have been at Appalachian State, and I would have been like, well, but it's Deion Sanders. You know what I'm saying? He could have been at Lu- Louisiana Monroe, but it's Deion Sanders. You know, I'm. he could have been at UConn, but it's Deion Sanders. He brings a level of, of attention, insight, you know, opportunity, mm-hmm. the coaches that are, he's going to bring in, his connections. So mm-hmm. there's so many things about the cachet of Deion that like, you, you can't look past. But for you, being a Colorado guy and seeing this transformation, please take us through, like, you committing to Colorado, what it first was to you when you were there, your experience, and then now seeing it with, like, Dion. Like, and, and talk about that spring game, too, when you get a chance. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like a, a proud parent. I feel like a <laughs> proud parent the way the school is evolving because it's like mm. – I know I wasn't tripping for going there. It's like he – all he had to do was – all he had to do was get the right people there in terms mm-hmm. of his coaching staff. You know, he had to do the right thing, get his coaching staff, you know, the, 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 um, what is it called? The tutors, mm-hmm. all that stuff. That was going to be his hardest thing because everything else about Colorado just speaks volumes. Like the scenery, all you got to do, the scenery, the facilities, you know, where we playing, that's all, all you have to do is see that. And, is a change of your life, especially for the for the mm-hmm. kids he's recruiting. You know, they're coming all from a lot of them are coming from the south, from the east coast, Florida. You know, these are kids that's never been around mountains and that's never really been in that type of scenery. So I think for him, it's been special just to watch what he's been doing. And once he got to Colorado, he he said himself he didn't he didn't know Colorado had all this. So he knew yeah, he had every he had all the resources to make this thing really beautiful. Yeah. So I I think it's just crazy watching it unfold. Bro, people don't realize how beautiful your campus is. Like, I remember when I came to visit you the first time, you know, I, I got to visit you by accident just because nice. of a plane delay. And I'm like, I'm, I just went over there just for a, a 36 hours. And I'm like, this is where you go to school? Yeah. Like, I thought UConn was a pretty campus because it's this big playing field of, like, this farmland and it's just all together and it's nice. But Colorado looks like, like – Somebody took their like the uh, the the blueprint laid out like was from Picasso of, like what this thing is gonna look like. I'd like that Aztec mountain. This look, it, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and and really, people think Dion is like gonna be at Colorado for two years, change around, and he's at he's going to Florida State. Better not. <laughs> <laughs> not only is he better not, but I actually find it. Uh, I'm gonna put it down because making me lag a little bit. Um, I do feel like, I do feel like, you know, I heard he's trying to bring a baseball team to Colorado. Like, I think he's invested and I really feel like he saw that mountains and realized like, yo, this place is, is mag, it's beautiful. Like, how do I leave this? So I can see him, I can see him, uh, being there for like being, turn them into a real national power. Like this is where I want to live. And I think he should, because I think they'll keep getting giving him money. I think more boosters will eventually keep getting involved. You'll see so much more revenue come to the school because of his impact. And I mean, look, Nike, we're in the NIL era. Like these big brands, like he's a, he's Nike now. Like he left, he was originally Nike. He went to Under Armour, He left Under Armour. He's back at Nike. He has his own shoe, his own cleat already. Like what, there's this, there's, the potential is endless. So I could see him being there forever, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second, John. One second. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, let me see what some of y'all are in here saying. Prom did. J-Rob, do you believe? Ask Juwan, does he believe? Juwan believes, y'all. You feel me? Juwan is a believer. He means he's his alma mater. Would Juwan have liked a part of the would, – would you have liked to be a part of the Dion era? Uh, that was a question. One of, yes, we got a few questions in here for you. Uh. Would you would you want to but hold on before we get to these questions because they know they got to super chat some of these drones. They can't just all get these off the off the muscle. Let me get my, my questions take precedent. Um now the game, TCU. What were your expectations? Were you and, and be and be honest, just be honest. Like I know you was a believer because 
Well, actually, you know what? Go to the spring game because you said after the spring game you realized this shit was different. So take this, take take the people through that spring game because we only got to watch it. You got to feel it. You were on the sideline. You got to see the the pomp and circumstance to it. So tell us about that spring game and if was that the moment you knew like my school is on a different path now? Yeah, I know it's a different path because that was the first sold out spring game in years, like yeah, maybe a decades. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what's funny though. They were all it was sold out for a team that's no longer like together. <laughs> that team was 90% of that team is gone that played in the spring game. So oh, like, really? yeah, probably well, all right, maybe not 90, maybe 75%. Because oh, wow. he had some of his transfers in, but he didn't have all of his transfers right, in. And right. some of them wasn't earned when he even played. So but just to see the following he had there, the, the all the cameras, all the, the alumni that came back, you know, he has everybody wanting to support him. Mm-hmm. And the, the recruits, he brought all the recruits in, seeing all these five stars and people that really would never even think about Colorado, but now right. they're there because he's there. So I see the, the resources he got in the weight room, the updates. Yeah. You know, I just know that people are wanting to play for that. And, you know, hearing from some of the players that were there, you know, some of the guys – Said he's a some of the guys liked what was going on, but they knew mm. they weren't gonna play, so it was in their best interest to leave. But I mean, just hearing from what they said and the way they were working differently, I just knew it was gonna be the one. Like mm-hmm. they were gonna be nice, but the, TCU, so so you TCU, know, so TCU. Were you nervous? I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie. How nervous were you? I didn't see. I didn't know. I barely knew some of the new players on the team. I knew some of the guys that played in the spring. I mean, game. bro, it, it was a complete roster rehaul, bro. Complete roster. So I really <laughs> didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to yeah. expect. But I mean, you know, I wasn't gonna miss that shit. I was not missing it. Even if they even if they lost, I'm there I'm yeah. watching the whole game. You know, everybody's just so excited to see what they can do. And I was blown away. I did not know he had pieces like that. Like he, Dion was not capping. He was not capping when he told you. When he told y'all he was bringing Louis. Like, My luggage is Louis. My luggage is Louis. Yeah, no, nah, his luggage is Louis. Luggage and um, Louis. Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders, Dylan Edwards too, phenomenal. Like them three. Oh my goodness, offensively insane. Uh, I haven't seen anything like Travis Hunter. I don't think in my life. And don't get me wrong, I've seen, we've seen, I've seen great, we've seen great two-way players. I mean, uh, Charles Woodson is one to think of. And then obviously you and I personally know Jabril. Yeah. So we've seen him not only do it at an elite level in high school, but then do it at an elite level in college. You know what I'm saying? But this kid is different because I'm going to say the difference between him and Jabril. And obviously Jabril, if you find this, if you see this clip, you know, I love you to death, my brother. I love you to death. But Michigan didn't have him out there running digs and goal balls and goal line fades. They was giving him the ball in wildcat situations just as they were supposed to. That is exactly what you're supposed to give a guy like Jabril to do. But this kid was out there being their X receiver, then going to guard the team's best X receiver. 160 snaps. I've never seen anything like this before. Are you at all concerned about the snap count? I personally think this is what Travis can do. I think he's well conditioned. He didn't look tired to me. And I mean, I know everybody's worried about injury concerns and this, but if he can do it, I feel like just let him do it. But he did. Yeah. That's it's hard. That's hard. Cause as much as I want to see him do it, I don't know if I want him to do it the whole season. Yeah. It's because it could add up. But I mean right. he's gonna have the resources to be able to take take care of his body the way he should. Right. No, um, he's in a great condition. As long as he uses his resources to massage the, the real body, yeah. work, you know, after all, after the week and after all these games, and you know, they ease him during the week and not kill him. Yeah. I think he'd be able to do it. I think too. I think the other thing too is like I was saying. Um, I was saying on my own personal YouTube channel that I do feel like he can be fine with a snap count because, for example, when they play, when y'all play at Colorado State this year, y'all should be blowing them out. You know what I'm saying? And because y'all should be blowing them out, he don't need to play up by 35 yeah, going into sure. the third or fourth quarter playing both sides. Like, he can still play. You know, I'm not saying take him off the field completely, but I do think, you know, just let him play defense or, you know, let, let him just play offense just because sometimes you, I, I'm, I definitely am a believer of, of avoid the avoidable. Oh, you know sorry. what I'm saying? So if it's not a grudge match, get him, you know, you should get him out. Like a TCU – you couldn't take him off the field because you needed every snap. But 
you know, like Nebraska, y'all, y'all, y'all rival, y'all should blow them out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should blow them out. Um, but I think he should play the snaps. If he doesn't seem like he can't be conditioned to do it, if he look because he didn't look tired to me, because mm. he's catching go, he's catching seams up the up the hashes late in the third quarter. And he played 70 snaps in the first half already. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this stuff is unreal. I gotta admit, bro, he's he's a generational type of player, bro. Like, yeah. you know, game acts, which side of the ball is he better at? I mean, really. I, think, I really don't know. Like, I really can't say one side or the other because of how he's extremely great at, at both, and I know he can do both at a – That's funny. What about you? It's funny because it's still – it's like – it's still so early to tell which side yeah. he's better at. But I like him – from watching him in high school, I like him at receiver better. I didn't really watch him as a DB. Yeah. So if he's really strapping shit, then he really DB. Bro, all the, he, all the, all the all the um two way players they always end up playing DB, but I think the way he be attacking the ball, I think he should be a receiver. I don't I don't know. I I personally believe Juwan. This is gonna sound you know I'm I'm obviously projecting, and you know people can say this is an overreaction from one football game, but this kid's gonna be the number one pick in his draft class. Yeah, he might. because just just because of the versatility factor of it, and with the right coach like. You can do so many things with a kid like this. Like, imagine if a guy like Kyle Shanahan or Sean McVay got their hands on this kid, or God forbid, Andy Reid gets their hands on this kid. You know what? What the the things that they can conjure up with him is crazy, and that's and I think that's what makes him so special. Is like, I still I think he'll be the first player ever drafted as an athlete in the that's NFL because that's, that's what I can see. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I go think ahead. that. I think that the year the year will tell. I think the year will start to tell, mm-hmm. you know, as time goes, what what side he looks better on or has more potential on. First mm-hmm. game is still too hard to say on the first game because he literally had equal production on both sides. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we'll see how the season goes and where he goes. I know I know Prime's gonna be in his air for DB. Yeah. <laughs> I know that for sure. Let me ask you this: Do you think he could do that in the NFL? I mean, maybe not to the same level in terms of like the snap yeah. count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a safe snap yeah, count. That, but, but I'm just saying, like, could you see him taking a roster spot in two positions? Like, if you do the, the depth chart, could he? Could you see him being a CB one and then, you know, wide receiver two or three as well? Yeah, I could definitely see him do cornerback as a primary and then receiver as secondary mm-hmm. because Prime did that. Prime did a little bit of that in his league, right? As well, so it's been done a little bit. Devin Hester, he Devin Hester tried DB a little bit in the league, and he also yeah. went to receiver, so a little bit. But I don't see him being a receiver first and then doing DB. I don't see that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely I, corner and some receiver. And then my other guy on the team, Shador Sanders, bro. Blew me out the water. <laughs> Pause. Pause. Hey yo. Hey yo. <laughs> Juwan. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, bro. Shador Sanders, 5,010 yards, school record. I know 510 yards. Listen, bro, this is no slight to Montez. I don't know you, bro. (laughs) I don't know you, Montez. I saw you play a lot of football. Shout out my guy, Tez. Shout out your guy, Tez. But I got to ask you, bro, you and LaVisca, what – and uh, KD Nixon, what could y'all have done Ooh, with a guy like Shadow? 100 plus? <laughs> yeah. Every, for 100 yards? Everybody bro, 100 like, plus is crazy, bro. You you getting the whole family fed. But, I mean, we could have done it with Montez, too. We could have done it with him, too, you know. But definitely with Shador. No, y'all couldn't. <laughs> no offense. Shador, he's – I think what makes him different is upstairs. I think he has all the resources. You know, his dad is prime. So he has all the resources for him to be great. And he's it's obviously shown that he's took in all those resources and he's been using them because yeah. he looks ahead of ahead of them. He already knows where he's going. He just looks like he's made this throw many millions of times before. Bro, he was a dot machine, bro. Yeah. yeah. How accurate is he, bro? Yeah, he's deaf. I he's gotta keep that going. Yeah, no, nah, I, I think it's crazy. And I love his demeanor post game because, bro, you could tell. Everything he did on that field, bro, did not was didn't surprise him at all. Yeah, like it, it was clear as day that he knew what he was from the start. And you know, Tom Brady texted him after the game. Mm-hmm. I see that. T- told him not to be not to be satisfied. Yep. Could you 
I, I could uh, 100% see him being the second quarterback picked in the NFL draft this year. Yeah. Uh, just because of, I, I think right now we're in an era where pedigree in the NFL is at an all time high. And what I mean by pedigree is just like parent, parent played in the league, sibling played oh, in yeah, the yeah, league. Yeah, 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 you know, I, I think, I, I think we're in that. We're like, we're in the, I think right now we're in the biggest boom of that in the NFL. Like Marvin Harrison Jr., you can tell his daddy was a pro. And that, and he definitely utilized that in his game. I think he's a monster at Ohio State, clearly with Shador. But if you're going to the NFL level, I can name a plethora of guys. Uh, Patrick Sertan, mm-hmm. NFL kid. Joey Porter Jr. just graduated this year. He's an NFL kid. J.C. Horn. There's yeah. there's uh, Christian McCaffrey's dad won a Super Bowl with the Broncos. So there's so many players. There's so many players that have 100% shown like pedigree matters, and you can tell they're they're in some ways ahead of their peers just because they kind of understand NFL concepts, schemes. Uh, they understand how to watch film at a younger age than most. Cause I feel like, you know, for me, I didn't really learn how to learn. I didn't really learn how to know, know how to watch film. So I got to college my second yeah. year, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, being ahead of the curve, I, I think 100% makes them, makes them, you know, better when they're you know getting drafted things like that and i feel like shador you can 100 percent see like oh yeah uh, you, you put it in perspective like did the kids grow up with a did the kids grow up with a with a with a football field in their backyard and he said and Dion goes you damn sure that's like asking mm-hmm. bill gates do his kids got computers <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the family business you know nah, what i'm saying facts. it's the family business so y'all got four big games this year that i think are going to make or break your season Mm-hmm. USC at home. You go uh-huh. to Oregon. You go to okay. Oregon. I think you got Oregon State at Oregon State, and then I think you have um, Utah. No, you have. I think you have Oregon State at home, and you have to go to Utah. Uh, Those are four really tough games. All four of them. I think. I think you guys can win two upset. I think Oregon and Utah are probably the ones that I'm the most nervous about, just because I don't think. Actually, I'm gonna say we, because I'm a Buffalo too. I don't think we have. I don't think we are good enough in the run defense department. And maybe I could be overreacting to the TCU game because our browse is a good offensive mind, but also to new continuity. You know, defense is very much about alignment and assignment. I don't I don't think they're lacking in the talent. I just think, you know, maybe there needs to be some some cleanup, some differences, some adjustments that could be made. But just in case it is, I think Utah and Oregon, Utah, Oregon State and Oregon are going to be hard ones because. Oregon State and Utah can run the football really well, and I think Oregon will have the the defense to potentially get more stops than I think like that of a USC. Like I think that USC game over under probably going to get to like eighty five at some point. Yeah. So. so I think. Um, I don't know. I think my prediction before the season was at least six wins. Right. So I'm up that shit. Up in it. I'm up in it to eight. I'm up to seven. I'm up okay. To seven. I got him at nine. <laughs> nine? They got, got 12 games? Nine. 12 games? Yeah, I got him nine. Okay. I'm definitely taking seven. I think. Seven. And I'm confident with half those games like you are. Yeah. Um, I'm not scared of. I'm Honestly, our our thing with CU, our problem's always been, even though we got to stop these teams, I feel like we've never been able to outscore these teams. So I feel right. like. Right now we have an offense, so I really, I'm right. really not scared of any of those teams. Our That's defense, a, go ahead, my bad. I didn't mean to cut you up. Go ahead, my bad. There you go. Our defense is whatever, but I'm, I think that our offense is gonna carry us a long way. So we gonna I like. I mean, y'all got the secondary because that's not your issue. I think y'all do have the piece in the sec, uh, the secondary. Shout out to that young boy Trevor Woods, man, white boy out there making plays oh, at DB. I love to see it. Safety. You got I'm, safety, yeah, yeah. He's good. You could tell he's just a football player. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You could just tell like he come up, he tackle. He know what he's doing. You can tell he watched film. I love everything about his game. Uh, I, and then obviously, you know, they put Sh- – I think they had Shiloh at cornerback. Uh, right. Shiloh played a bit of corner, and then they had Craig Hiles from Jackson State transferred in. He played a bit of corner. And then obviously you had Travis Gardner one. So I know – I do think the one thing y'all could do in games that I think will make y'all – that could help y'all in terms of like the defensive part, especially in the run game, is y'all could play man. Y'all can be in a lot of situations where y'all could stack the box and let your DBs win because, um, you know, you got 
when you got Shiloh at safety, Craig at uh, corner, you still got Cormani McClain on the bench. People don't forget, Cormani McClain is there. He was at the game. He's not wearing number one for no reason. Dion said, if you're wearing number one, you a dog. You got to be. I just think, obviously, he's a true freshman. You know, there's a bunch of players that did not play in that opener that I still think I still think you're going to see some changes. So don't be yeah, – uh, there's still a lot of talent there. Like, even uh, Austin McCall, freshman of the year at Houston, transferring to Colorado, I think he's probably – I know Dylan Edwards was was incredible, but I, but I think if you look at – What number is he? 22. 22. He played at Houston. He, too, is – I'm going to say he's just as good in, as Dylan in terms of just – a player like they do different things well, but they're completely different players. Um, oh, and then Gabe brought up something uh, that I thought was interesting. What do you think about the leader and the dog on the jersey instead of putting captain? Yeah. L is for leaders, the D is for dogs. That's pretty different. I like it. It's different. I think that I, I like C better. I ain't gonna lie. I think C <laughs> it just so C is just so original. It's like I don't know. It's just fucking. NFL, like you see the NFL, yeah. everybody always wants to see like that's yeah. real business, real, real grown. But I mean, DNL is different. You know, Dion's all about doing things different, doing things his way. So I think mm-hmm. it's dope. I think it's dope. Yeah, I think I think it's dope too. But I also like it too because there's gonna be those players that are gonna have a different motivation. Because I what I what I will say is like True. you're the, the leaders are probably already set, like you kind of know who your leaders are, and that but that D though, the dog hey yo. <laughs> the, <laughs> yo, the d the d uh is cool because you know people are going to strive to prove that they a dog you know what i'm saying yeah. so i think that's the cool part of it as well just because you're going to have some players now they they want the they want that letter on their jersey now to just be able to say like you know so i think it gives them a level of motivation and I got to admit, bro, Dion be having me ready to run through a, a wall. Like, I might just start having my alarm clock in the morning be like a Dion speech, you know, like <laughs> just because he he really know how to uh, – he really know how to get get you going. Uh, drink more water with the Super Chat. The one thing Colorado did extremely well was get the ball out of Sanders' hands. Oh, uh, yeah. Facts. If a defense could take that away, how do you think we will fare? That O-line looked big, don't look that big and slash strong to hold up. I actually thought the O-line looked pretty good yesterday. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was actually pretty impressed with the O-line um, and how well you think they're fair without getting the ball out. I think Sanders is mentally well enough to go to a second and third option. Yeah. I honestly think he has all the goods. What do you think about that? Um, I think I really like their coach. I really like uh, their coaching staff and how they – they're actually – they're really putting them in real good positions. So I feel like they're going to keep them in a good position and he can make every throw. So, I mean, they gave him enough time versus TCU. I mean, it was a place he got sacked, but, I mean, who doesn't get sacked? You know, who yeah, who yeah. doesn't get sacked? Um, I, just, I just think that the resources he have, like Pat Shermer, I'm, I'm watching the game. I see Pat mm-hmm. Shermer on the sideline, and he's wearing a headset, and I stare. <laughs> that was literally my offensive coordinator yeah. at the Denver Broncos. In yes, yes. You know, I see this guy on the sideline talking to them. I'm not sure if he's their OC, but, I mean, they have – they have the right people. No, Pat Schumer's not the OC, but he's on the he's on the staff. And he's not even the OC, which is crazy. So it's like they have all the right people there for them to be successful. I mean, Warren Sapp, I think, is the D-line coach. Oh, wow. Um, you know, ironically enough, Coach Uha, the strength the strength and conditioning coach on your team was actually my strength and conditioning coach at Tennessee State University. Oh, wow. HBCU. So, yeah. so Dion brought in an HBCU okay. strength and conditioning coach to, to Colorado. Yes, he was my like strength and conditioning coach. Oh, he was phenomenal, actually. His brother, his brother is actually a WWE wrestler named Apollo Cruz. And um and, and Coach Uha was phenomenal just because Coach Uha had – at Tennessee State, we had this little-ass box for a weight room, and he brought the juice every week. Um, You would have never known we lacked in resources with a guy like him. And so I love seeing him get this opportunity because he really does deserve it. I've been trying to get in contact with him. I've wanted him to come on the show just because, obviously, you graduated from Colorado, and he was my trainer – at, at uh, Tennessee State. So I think, you know, the mutuality would be cool to talk to him. You know, his brother's a wrestler. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll both reach out to him together, just try to see, if, you know, if he wanted to come chop it up with us. Um, but, yeah, bro, this has been a phenomenal episode, bro. I know you are – so are you about to move out of – are y'all still in Camp Housing right now? Are you about to – No, so we got out of Camp Housing maybe two weeks ago. Okay, okay. Um, I literally just got the keys to my, my apartment yesterday. Oh, so okay, okay. 
get all my furniture this Friday. So okay, okay. Still in the spot to that. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, I just want to say, bro, thank you so much for coming back on. I appreciate you still being locked in with us, even though you've been so busy this summer. Um, I just want to say, because this is the first week of the NFL season, I want to say to you, my brother, good luck this year. Obviously, you know, I'm rooting for you. We are making a trip. PC record. I'm at my little camcorder vlog. We're going to Indianapolis this year. We're definitely locking in with you and Josh Downs again for definitely coming to rock with us. Um, and, you know, I just can't wait to see y'all shot away. I'm going to wake some people up. And I love what y'all building out there in uh, Indianapolis, bro. And uh, any last words, my brother? We appreciate you here at Player's Choice always. Uh, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you having me. It's been dope, man. Make sure y'all tune in. They got us on a loser schedule. So every week at one o'clock, but I mean, make sure y'all tune in because we about to be, yeah. we about to be winning a lot of them games. So. Yeah, I can't wait to watch it. Make sure y'all tune in. PC is rocking with the Indianapolis Colts all year just because of you, my brother, and we rooting for you, and we can't wait to see what's next. To the chat, we'll see y'all later. Right after this is my guy Fluent on Fluent's top ten. Shout out to Fluent, and y'all make sure y'all stay tuned because also right after Fluent's top ten, we will have Cowboys beat. Is hosting the very first episode of his Cowboys show. Definitely be ready for the Cowboys propaganda coming to Players' Choice. Free make time. sure y'all don't be too brainwashed. And uh, make sure y'all tune in to Fluent next ASAP. And we'll see y'all later. Peace. All right, brody. All right, bro.